Welcome back to Mike's and Mustangs. I'm your host, Heem. I play football here at Stevenson. And I'm also your host, Kylie. I play women's soccer. All right, let's dive into the athletics update. Your MAC champions men's ice hockey extend their winning streak to eight games after wins versus Newman on Friday and Saturday. Scores being 5-2 to two and 6-3. to three. Congratulations. Women's basketball took down the former number two team in the conference, York, last Wednesday, thanks to a 29-point performance by junior Emery Jasowskis. Uh, men's volleyball, women's basketball, men's basketball, women's lacrosse, and men's ice hockey are all home this Friday and Saturday. Visit GoMustangSports.com to find more information. How was your winter break? <laughs> it was great. Um, got to hang out with the fam uh, for Christmas and New Year's. And yeah, how was your winter break? My winter break was good. I went to Aruba for a week with the fam. Nice, mm -hmm. nice. What did you do in Aruba? Mm, we did a lot of things. We went ATVing. We went um, snorkeling on a boat. There were pigs? Snorkeling? Oh. On a boat. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's when you go is that when you dive that's when you put goggles on with and like you a deep dive mm -hmm. oh okay yeah that's fine. yep i knew that that was mm -hmm. a test just making sure yeah. you weren't lying about going to aruba mm -mm. good stuff okay is there anything you're looking forward to this coming semester uh good grades let's go with good grades um it's time for us to uh be on the mac honors list again <laughs> again so Excited that's about that. Do you have good. any uh, goals for this semester? Good grades, obviously. There we go. Um, Get through my spring soccer season healthy. Let's go. Um, Yeah, that's it. Good stuff. All right. Well, I think it's time to introduce the man that needs no introduction, but I'll do it anyway. <clears throat> so... This man is a 22-23 indoor all-region player in shot put and weight throw. 2023 outdoor all-MAC second team in shot put and discus. 2023 MAC field athlete of the year. And drum roll. <laughs> this week's field athlete of the week. Nate Williams. Yeah. The man, the myth, the legend. Mr. Records himself. What's going on, man? Uh, nothing much, nothing much. How we doing? Good, good. Good, good. Got uh, anything on the mind that you want to kind of share with the group today? Um, well, I'm coming off of a pretty good meet. Um, I achieved like one of my goals. So like all season, I've been trying to put together what's called a series. So for those who don't know track and field, you get three throws in like a prelims. And if the top nine get three more throws, and I was ranked first coming into the meet, so I was okay. I have six throws, hopefully. And I was just trying to put together like a good series, like throw after throw, like they're they're consistent, they're good, like you know. And I finally did that, so I'm pretty proud of myself for that. Oh, love that. So, how did you get into throwing? Um, so I started freshman year of high school. Um, played football with my brother. He's a year older than me. Um, we had this friend uh, who did indoor track and was like, we did basketball together too, like a recreational league. And we were at practice one day. He was like, we we're talking to his mom. He was like, yeah, like so-and-so is doing outdoor track, like you guys should try it. And me and my brother were like, okay, can keep us in shape for football. You know, I can throw, he can run. And then I really found a passion for it. And I was just like, this is my sport. Did you try the track part of track and field? <laughs> so every year, no matter what, like we had to do some sort of tryout. So I did like a 100, a 200, and a 300. It was, I never did a 400, but it was always up to a 300. Okay. And I tried it, but I didn't really like it. Okay. I like it. <clears throat> so as far as football and track and field goes. Okay. In high school. Uh-huh. Where was your goals? Was it to get to the NFL or was it to make <laughs> the Olympic team? What, what were we doing? Um, so I didn't start playing football until freshman year of high school. Okay. So I was kind of new to it. So I was like, okay, you know, I can grow like in the sport and I was just see where it takes me, right? Cause it was just like, oh, like my dad was like, you know, you want to play football or basketball, like just do it, right? So I was like, all right, I'm just doing it. And then see where it, it took me. And then started getting really good at track and football was still, it was getting, like, I was progressing, just I was progressing more at track. Yep. So I was like, I might as well stick with track, you know, try to go somewhere for that. All right, I like that. I think going from track and field, well, from football to track and field, you go from a team sport to like yeah. an individual kind of thing. 
What's the difference? Um, so I can't say I like one more than another because like the team feeling of football, like I made pretty much all of my friends in high school through that way and like, you know, branched out to their friends and stuff like that. So it's like the community feel of being on a team is just great. But like you can have that same feeling which I can feel. It's just different because you don't always practice together, but you see them at meets, you know. Gotcha. And like I'm fortunate enough to room with some teammates, so I, I you know, I stay in touch with them that way. But it also feels great to like know that you accomplish something like just like for yourself and like by yourself yep, kind of. Yep. So I guess I don't know. They're just right. different, but both good. I like it. I like it. So as as far as that individual sport goes, is it more pressure when you're out there by yourself, or when you're out there with a team when you have ten other guys on the field that's depending on Nate to do his job? Which one is more pressure? <laughs> I actually like that question. That was a good question. Because I also feel like on the football team, like, yeah, you have to do your job, but they also do have to do their job. So right. it's like you can rely on them. They can rely on you. Correct. But when you're – it's just you. If you mess up, it's on you. Like, it's like – and I feel like that's a little deeper. That's right. But, like, I feel like it's great to win as a team. So I would say, like, the pressure is on doing bad, like, just by yourself. Well, I don't know. That's it. Because your teammates, there could be a situation where your teammates blame you for something, and that's more pressure. So it's true. That's true. <laughs> I think the biggest question when it comes to Mr. Records himself: When did you realize that you're pretty good at the sport? Um, had to be junior year of high school. I was throwing decently well. I was like, okay, you know, I thought about like states, like, because the the better you get, like, the more opportunities open up for you. And, you know, I was like, OK, look, I can go to States. I went to States. Um, senior year was kind of iffy because of COVID. And then I was like, you know, but I, I can still go somewhere. I was looking at a D2 school, but like they weren't really the best. And I was like, OK, you know, there's more out there. And then I think COVID kind of messed up how I was getting recruited that. Mm -hmm. But I was like, Stevenson is like a good school. I'll go there and I'll just dominate. Right. Freshman year, I was completely humbled. Like I got humbled. Like I was like, <laughs> I realized, okay, like I'm not like the top dog I thought I was. So I have to put in the work to get there, right? There you go. And then in college, it was sophomore year, right? I broke my first record. I went to regionals, and after regionals, my brother called me and he was like, "Yo, like, did you go to Natties? Like, did you make Natties?" Yeah. And I was like, "Natties? Like, what is Natties?" Right? <laughs> he was like, "Nationals? Did you go to that? Like, are you going to Nationals?" And I was like, uh, "I don't, I don't know. I don't think so." And like that just like expanded my mind of like, mm -hmm. okay, there's more out there, right? Yes. And so junior year, last year, I was like, you know, let's go to nationals, you know, let's see how high we can get. I love that. And it was just from there. Cool, cool, cool. Do you have a specific throwing coach on the track team? Yeah, yeah. So okay. uh, Coach John Erdahl, shout out to him. Um, basically is somewhat like the reason why I'm so good because I came in, I <laughs> could tell you my first ever hammer throw. Uh, was not very good okay. and like most coaches would have not put me in that event again but he gave me another chance and like I finally got up there and that was my best event that's what's up how many other throwers are on the team um so right now we have um a couple of transfers coming in okay um they're trying to get their stuff their stuff situated with like compliance stuff like that but we're pretty stacked on the girls side uh, I think we have like like six seven I know you've had a few of these now but how does it feel to be this week's field athlete of the week um, if I'm being honest, I actually didn't know I got it until <laughs> you announced it. That's <laughs> cool. But feels pretty good. Um, no, it feels good to get recognized for something you do good. Yep. Um, it feels good. Nice. And you were at the Penn Relays recently? Uh, so it was just the Penn State Open, the okay. National Open, yeah. Nice. And you were, <laughs> nobody knows this, I know this, but you were the only <laughs> D3 player at the meet. Yeah. How, how does how does that feel? You're repping D three. Um, I don't know. It just felt like I kind of belonged there. Like I could, I saw myself as like part of the competition, not just be, oh like there's heavy competition there. Like no, I can compete with these guys. Yes, sir. Um, it was just like a great experience. I want like a lot of more people to experience that, just because, well, it's like kind of like a mind opening thing. Like your your mind gets expanded a little bit. Yep. Like there's more out there. Yep. Um, it was a great guy to see an Olympian uh, compete, which was pretty cool. Um, just a great environment. Nice. I know one thing I always think about once I'm like later in the season and I, I see a bit more success, I'm always like, what did I do week one that I'm doing down in week eight? So like from point A to now, 
what can you say like okay i wasn't doing this early on but i learned through the process like this is what i'm good at this is what i need to work on like how does that process go for you and wh what are those things uh, i think it's just like new information because with throwing it's always like a technical aspect like a strength aspect so as you get strength you have to kind of tweak your technique to fit your strength okay um so it's just like learning what like the sweet spot is for both of those that you can reach your potential yep i like that Okay. Okay. So what are some of your goals as you continue through this indoor season and into outdoor? Um, let's see. So I set goals for myself, like kind of like number wise. Okay. So like if I, if I hit these, I know like I'll be like, and also like set them kind of higher. So if I don't achieve them, I'll be like, okay, at least I like hit like this number mm -hmm. when that could have been actually my goal. So I don't know if you guys understand the numbers. Uh, hit us with it. I definitely will. <laughs> see what happens. So in weight throw, I'm at 20 meters right now, like 20 and a half. I want to see if I can get as far into the 21s as possible, okay. right? I feel like that would be like, that would really solid, like solidify like my spot in the nation Yep. and see what I can hit at nationals. Um, and shot put, maybe I'm at 16, like low 16 right now. I want to see if I can get into like the mid 17s. Okay. Just by the end of this season, and that way for outdoor, I know like it should be like really like good. And um, I want to see if I can. So there's a guy. I'm second in the nation for weight throw, and the. Uh, the top spot, I I met him last year at, at uh, Nationals, both indoor and outdoor. He's a cool guy, but I want to see if I can give him a scare a little bit. <laughs> okay. Because, like, he has the D3 national record for weight throw. Nice. And he's he almost has it in a shot put, too. But I want to see if I can scare him, like, just a little bit. <laughs> let him right. know I'm there, you know. There you go. So I that's like the goal that. I have. Um, is there a difference between throwing indoor and outdoor those few those seasons? Yeah. So, in indoor, um, it's kind of like, there's, mo there's mainly, like, wooden circles or, like, like polished concrete for outdoor is basically like the same as like a sidewalk. So nice. like the, the, the circles indoor are kind of faster. Okay. And then the events are a little different. Like an in, in indoor shot is like, just like a hard, like, like shell material okay. where outdoor is, is metal. And then a weight throw is just like a really heavy ball on like a chain. And like, mm -hmm. there's like a handle to it, but it's like shorter. Exactly. And hammer throw is like the outdoor version of that where it's like longer, it weighs a little less. So it goes really far. Okay. Or like further. So people's outdoors numbers are usually higher. Better. Okay. Yeah. That's for like track overall. Okay. They say outdoor is better. Nice. Do you have any advice for some of the young athletes coming up? Um, it's probably said like too much, but it's true. Like you just got to put the work in. Like you got to want it for yourself. Like find something that you're very passionate about and just want it for yourself and like just keep working at it. Like you're going to fail, but make sure you learn something from those failures. I love that. I can attest to that as well. I see Nate out here all the time. It can be zero degrees. He has like a short sleeve shirt on and he's throwing something out there. It's Look, working. So I can't be restricted. Hey, I got it. There you go. That's right. Rain, sleet or snow. It's going to let him go. My bad. Um, <laughs> we're going to move on to the next thing. Um, yeah. My question is, what is the funniest story that you have from a meet? I gotta think about this one. Um, mm, let's see, let's see. Funny story. There's so many, it's just me to like such a good time. Um, I gotta tell the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> sure. I was just gonna don't think be, about one. We gotta uh, know it. Don't be stingy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hmm. I'm having a hard time thinking of one. Let me think, let me think. It's just like the atmosphere around me is just so fun. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe freshman year, um, just like the team we had was really good. And my brother was on the team. Um, 
What? What was? What was? What was funny about it? Was Just like the jokes that they were saying. I can't remember them all. But. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, so Mr. Records himself. Okay, we're, we are assuming that there's some type of prep or some type of pregame thing that you got going on. Do you have any superstitions? Anything you do before every meet that you like gotta do to perform? Um, my coach definitely has uh, some, but. Just like the usual, like I lay all my stuff out. Like I'll put like my, cause I wear like an undershirt okay. under my jersey, mm-hmm. the undershirt, the jersey, the shirt I'm gonna wear on top, like the jacket. And I prep that, put that in one pile, and then I'll do like the, the lower body stuff. Yep. Put that in one pile. Um, I wear like the same undershirt. Obviously, I wash it, but it's just I wear that like every meet. Okay. Um, Is that a little bit of superstition yeah. in there, or okay? And then mm-hmm. I always have to sleep before the meet. Like on the way up there, no matter if it's like at like Goucher, like Towson, I gotta sleep before I go there. I feel that. Okay. Is there a specific playlist you always gotta throw on, or? Nah, it's whatever I'm feeling. Okay. Um, sometimes NBA Young Boy, sometimes like Ride Wave, sometimes like Smino or like something else. Do you have to be angry to throw far, or like, <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what kind of music does it take to truly like? um be the honestly best to me whatever music gets me locked in at the moment okay because like some people can throw like when they're angry like i see some people like like smack the like people will smack the person on their back okay. they'll go through i can't do that i cannot do that or like they'll yell when they throw mm-hmm. i can't do that <laughs> <laughs> okay i like that good okay we're gonna play a game oh, okay okay so we're gonna run through a list of different topics, but it's gonna be most likely two, and then you pick someone on your team. Okay. <laughs> okay. It could be you too. All right, bet, bet, bet. Okay. For the first one, who would be most likely to become president? Um, on the team now. Hmm. Honestly, off the top of my head, I could say Jackson Hall. Okay. Seems like a really good potential president. <laughs> okay. Um, the next one is become famous. Definitely Jai. My roommate Jai. <laughs> I agree. Uh, <laughs> he take. like basically halfway there. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good take. Or can I add another one to that? Mm-hmm. Jeremiah Battle. Okay. Mm-hmm. He basically already TikTok right. famous. Like That's facts. The mm-hmm. producer himself. I'm yeah, saying. I was gonna say he does the film stuff. <laughs> um who would be most likely to accidentally throw the shot put backwards? I actually did that in uh, <laughs> high school. <laughs> I almost so, hit yeah. this girl. I was like, I didn't hit her. I didn't hit her, but it was kind of close. So probably me. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Let's go. Let's go um, <laughs> bring snacks for the team, but eat them all before the meet starts. <laughs> right, John Womack. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah. That's a great take. Yeah. Definitely, John. Um, show up to practice late. Um, <laughs> let's see. Is it like my practice or like any, any practice? Track and field, baby. All right, John again. <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> John for the win. Uh huh. Accidentally wear their shirt inside out all day. Probably John again. <laughs> John just well, racking him up. I feel like I feel like Hayden Schindler would do that too, but he would notice and he would just keep it. Okay, like he yeah. would intentionally like. Yeah, yeah. yeah John yeah. just wouldn't have. He wouldn't even realize. Yeah. Okay, I think Valid. he'd done that before too. <laughs> okay, um, and then laugh at their own jokes before anyone else does. Me. <laughs> that was bad. That sounds about right. That sounds. I've done that right. before a little bit. <laughs> Actually, I lied. There's one more. Okay. This one's serious. All right. <laughs> this one's serious. Who would get arrested? And Ooh. why? <laughs> Let me think here. Hmm. Who would get arrested and why? If there's no why, you don't have to say it, but. Hmm. It's <laughs> a great question. I'm about to say my other roommate, Dakota Mayfield. Oh. Yeah. The why, I feel like it would be like, because he likes to play with fire sometimes. Okay. 
And so I feel like not not that he was saying anything on fire, it's just like people would be like, Oh, like why is he like why is he playing with fire? Yeah. No, I think not anything bad. It's a bad it's a valid yeah, reason. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. He's a mad scientist. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hate to talk about this right now. We took a big L here at the bank not too long ago. Fell to the Chiefs. So we now know that the Chiefs and 49ers are gonna be participating in the Super Bowl. <laughs> Who are you taking, Nate? <laughs> See, I feel like me and Jai were talking about this earlier, that they're trying to make Pat Mahomes into like the next Tom Brady. So I feel like, you know, the script is set up that the Chiefs <laughs> gonna win. Now, I'm personally a Cowboys fan. Okay. But I was rooting for the Ravens. Okay, but now that we lost. <laughs> Who are you rooting for? The Niners or the Chiefs? I don't really like the 49ers as many times they took us out the playoffs. Uh, okay. So I'm going I'm to have to say the Chiefs. All right. Chiefs so that means win. you're rooting for the Chiefs? Yeah, for uh, now. For now. All right. Well, me personally, I'm just going to go with the Niners because I'm not a part of the Swift game. It's not my thing. Kylie, who are you taking in the Super Bowl? <laughs> <laughs> I honestly don't keep up like at all. I know nothing about football except like touchdowns. That's right. Say the Chiefs. Goals. All that matters. So say the no, Chiefs. I don't want to say the Chiefs. <laughs> um, the whole like Taylor Swift thing. That's the Chiefs, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Forty ers There you go. Yeah. Forty ers That's just getting really old. Two to one. Yeah. I agree with that though. So we'll play this back when we see uh, Brock Purdy holding up the Lombardi. I think we'll see. Don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea who you're talking oh about. It's the starting quarterback for the 49ers. Okay. Mr. Irrelevant himself. Yeah. Become irrelevant. <laughs> Noted. All right. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for tuning in, and thank you, Nate, for joining us. Of course. Thank you guys for having me. Yes, sir. Continue to support your Stevenson athletes this weekend at our various home events. Uh, make sure to follow Go Mustang Sports on Instagram, Threads, X, and TikTok. Uh, subscribe to Stevenson Athletics' YouTube channel. And be on the lookout for more Mike's and Mustangs coming your way.